Hi, this is Kevin. Today I'll present a brief overview of clean architecture, a way of designing an application to make it maintainable and testable. Let's take a look. But first, let's talk about how software applications are traditionally written. Traditionally, software applications start with a database model, then data access layer, and then the business layer, and finally the presentation layer. What's wrong with this approach? Nothing really, but what do the objects look like in this system? Let's take a closer look at this application. Traditional web apps typically look like this. The data access layer has an ORM and a bunch of POCOs. The presentation layer has a controller and a bunch of POCOs. And in the business layer, everything is a service. Car service, book service, this service and that service. However, if you have a lot of business logic, then with this model, you will start noticing that the number of services will increase. Switching to a clean architecture with richly defined objects will change that. Clean architecture is a type of layered architecture. There are three key ideas central to clean architecture. Let's take a look at those three concepts in detail. Key idea number one, start with a domain model in the middle. First, the domain model. Instead of starting with a database, Clean architecture starts with a domain model. If you are using domain-driven design, then this is where your aggregates, entity, and value objects will reside. The next layer is the application layer. This is where all the use cases are. If you are using domain-driven design, then this would be equivalent to the concept of domain services. Use cases should be written based on how someone would use the system. And if someone in your team is like, but what about view models or controllers? Ask them, well, does the end user care about that? No. Well then, don't talk about it. The next layer is the interface adapters. This is where the controllers and the gateways are located. Finally, you have the infrastructure layer. This is where the developers can start talking about databases, adapters, web frameworks, and HTTP protocols. You can talk about anything except stored procedures. No stored procedures. If anyone in your group mentions stored procedures, there's only one thing you need to do. Challenge them to a duel with nunchucks. Key idea number two. Dependencies point inward. Anyway, another thing to note is that the infrastructure layer should only reference the interface adapter layer. There should not be a single using or import statement in the infrastructure layer that accesses the application or domain layer and the interface layer should only reference the application layer, and the application layer should only reference the domain layer. So something like this, where the infrastructure layer calls the application layer or domain layers, should not happen. Key idea number three, limit external dependencies. External references in clean architecture should be limited. That means none of the inner layers, like the adapter layer or the domain layer, should reference any external packages. Only the external infrastructure layer references external packages. It's also helpful to divide the external infrastructure layer into separate packages like web, database, and so on. I'm sure at this point you're like, that's all nice, but show me the code. Sure. I've prepared a small half-finished example microservices API written in c -sharp. This API helps manage a scrum team. It has user stories, bugs, and tasks, and so on. Well, let's roll up our sleeves and dive right in. So here's a solution. I'll post a link to this in the description somewhere. There are a lot of missing pieces, sorry about that. I didn't have a lot of time to make a complete project. First, the domain model. I have a user story object, an epic object, and a bug object. These are just some examples of the domain model defined using domain-driven design. I also define the guard and other common objects that the domain model requires. As you can see, I have the domain objects here maintain their state and logic. If there is an exception, the state of the object is violated. Now you might ask about validation logic and why throw exceptions and all that. Why not use a notification pattern? I'll refer you to the nice article on validation in a DDD world. Anyway, notice I do not use any outside packages here. Instead, everything is defined right in this project. 
The application layer is where I define use cases and other objects that encapsulate business actions. Ideally, your use cases should mimic business transactions like end this sprint or report a bug. Try to make your use cases be about business transactions, not insert update delete methods. Doing it this way is nice because you can get a clear list of what all the use cases are in the system and a pretty clear idea of what they do. This follows the screaming architecture principle. So the repositories are defined here because the use cases need to interact with them and I can't put them in the infrastructure layer because then the use cases would need to call an outer layer, which would violate the rule that dependencies point inward. I recommend that repositories only have insert, update, and get by ID, or maybe get all objects. If you want to perform more complex queries, you might want to implement a separate finder or service or something like that. Also note that in this layer, I do not define any external dependencies here. Finally, the infrastructure layer. Notice how I split this into the web and database layers. So the infrastructure layer is where I have all the technical implementation details that the business does not care about. For example, in this web API controller, I have each endpoint mapped to a use case. The controller calls a use case and passes in a command. The use case then processes the command object and calls the output port, which the controller implements. The use case does not care what the controller does in the output port. All it knows is that it was called. This is a nice separation of concerns, especially if you're testing something like converting an object to a CSV file. You can test that the logic works in a unit test without having to necessarily worry about the CSV conversion process. This is the last layer we should be focusing on when developing an application. And look, it has all the external references defined as needed by the application. That's it for my brief overview of clean architecture. You can also learn more about clean architecture from this excellent book by Robert Martin, also known as Uncle Bob. I've also posted a link to his blog post on the subject. There are a lot of resources on the web, too many to list here. Well, I hope you learned something about clean architecture. And remember, if you like this content, please hit like and subscribe. Well, I hope you had a good day, and I'll see you in a future video.